June 1st, 2011, Kajaki, Afghanistan. Two teams comprised of Marines and Afghan uniformed police are high atop an elevated piece of terrain known as the Shrine, this one. We were together, had key personnel, machine gunners, and corpsmen, our medical personnel. We affectionately call them Doc. And we were checking our gear, making sure all of our comm was up and running. I got a radio check with hire over in headquarters, worked the boom mic that was attached to my earpiece, radio check with first team leader. We were good. Another day at the office. And we made our way down that hillside through the adobe compounds, now to cross the riverbed into the fields where farmers all day for the past two weeks, essentially, had been pulling roots and chopping down poppies, leaving behind little pencil-thin stalks. First team had made their way up through the knee-high, drying piles of poppy. They were shaking hands with farmers. And as they advanced, they began to move out of the village, or excuse me, out of the field into the village. It was right around that time where I looked up and I saw my machine gunners. I saw my corpsman, my doc. And I glanced up at team one and boom! They disappeared into a cloud of smoke. Break, 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 Cheyenne! Brimstone, this is Cheyenne too! Just received IED impact. 10 potential casualties, stand by for zap number. Roger, standing by. And I listened for first team leader, please say something. Give us a set rep, Cheyenne. Roger, just stand by, please, stand by. Please say something. Tell me something. Tell me that you're alive. And finally, a crackle through the smoke. Corman up. And I look at Doc, taking a knee with his med bag, ready. And I nod. And he runs into the cloud. Doc had no idea what he was going to encounter in there. He just knew an IED went off. He knew he had the med bag and the training. And he knew that he could add value to that situation. No matter what, in the difficult times in life, the only way to get through that situation is to add value. Add value in the difficult times. And you'll see that value turn into a moment of triumph. Because only a year before that explosion took place, I was dealing with a personal IED. An explosion which took place in my heart. See, I wasn't given the privilege of a giant, magnificent explosion for everybody to know that I had been blown to smithereens. I was alone, experiencing isolation, anxiety, anger, depression, guilt. I was alone. It was only a year before this, when I was an instructor in Quantico, a combat marksmanship instructor, training young lieutenants how to shoot, that I felt the lowest of my low. I'd already been on two combat tours to Ramadi, Iraq. My friends, my brothers were down, downrange fighting. And I drank a little too heavy. And it weighed on the marriage, and we got a divorce. She took the kids. I was suffering from a personal illness, and I actually lost my billet, my job in the Marine Corps from being an instructor. I had to do something else. And I felt alone. I was the only person in the world who could possibly be going through that, right? I was the only person in the world who's ever lost a loved one. The only one who's ever been divorced. The only one who's ever been separated from our children the only one who has experienced a personal illness or job loss? Do you know what these are? These are five common stressors that we would experience. I wasn't alone. These are the five common IEDs that we will all potentially have to face. And it was at that moment that I realized that I was in an IED. I was spinning out of control. I was on the merry-go-round with my legs flinging out of the air. 
I had no idea what was going on. And maybe you've experienced a similar feeling. So tell me, what's your IED? Maybe a loss of a loved one, a divorce, separation. We share in those similar experiences. I found other people who are sharing in those similar experiences, but when drunks get together with drunks, they get drunker. <laughs> I needed to find people of similar values, that same good orderly direction that I had, to be able to channel it. For me, it's simple. Love of life, love of family, love of country. I needed to find people who were my family, not necessarily my blood, and maybe you can relate to this as well. We have family members, don't we, that are not necessarily our blood relatives? Friends, advisors, mentors who inspire and lift you up? You have family. And in that moment of crisis when you're on the merry-go-round, they're the ones who are slowing it down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've seen this happen before. We share in your values. Focus on what you can control. At the moment, focus on what you can control. Family, you can be open and honest with them. They're the ones who are going to help you. They're going to help you develop your strengths so long as you're open and honest about your weaknesses. When you come together as a family and you unite, you have the ability to talk openly. We share those similar values. But strengths are also associated with weaknesses. There's a balance there. I'll give you an example. For instance, I'm strong of intellect. I'm right? a pretty intelligent guy. By that same token, imposter syndrome, insecurity, like standing in front of the mirror, getting ready for a TED Talk. Like, really, Marine? You're a grunt. What are you doing up here? You're right, I am a grunt. I'm physically strong. You're right, I am a grunt. And I carried around heavy stuff on my back, which means my back gives out every once in a while. See, I'm physically strong, but that weakness is there. And heart, empathy. I feel for other people in pain. I really do. My heart goes out to those people. But by that same token, I'm easily taken advantage of. Who else has a no solicitor sign on their front door? Anybody else? It's not because I'm mean. It's because I probably will take that magazine subscription for $10.95. <laughs> Five-year monthly recurring payments? Yeah, why not? Let's do it. I feel for you, brother. You got any pencils, too? <laughs> See, that's the thing. When you're together as a family, those values, we lift each other up. We're strong when we need to be strong in our moments of weakness. Because, boom! IEDs will go off in life. They do. And in that moment, the only thing to do is to add value to the situation. That's how you're going to get through. Because in that IED, Doc had no idea what he was going to do, just the med bag and training. None of us did. He went running into that smoke, and he immediately started treating one of the wounded Marines that was down. First fire team corpsman was already treating one. First team leader working the scenario, the situation. Afghan uniform police were punched out on the perimeter. Our machine gunners were in place. The landing zone was swept. I was relaying everything from my ear mic over to hire, and we had helicopters coming in, and everybody was adding value to that situation. Sounds simple, doesn't it? It's extremely difficult. Because that machine gunner right over there, he was the roommate of our brother bleeding on the dirt. And all he wanted to do was leave his gun and go screaming across the battlefield to help his friend. But he didn't because that wouldn't add value. In the moments of difficulty, the only way to make it through is to add value to the situation. And we put those two wounded Marines on helicopters and they flew away and we continued to patrol for another four months. And finally at 3 a.m. on a foggy night, we got home to Camp Pendleton. And our loved ones and those two Marines were waiting for us. 
I watched everybody pack all their gear up, climb in the car, and take off. The last time I led Marines. Six months later, I was out of the Corps, becoming an entrepreneur. I was a Marine veteran who had evolved. And I was suffering through isolation, anxiety, anger, depression, guilt, and IED went off. But there were others with similar experiences of same core belief, value, good orderly direction, who wanted to leverage their strength to fill in my weakness. Other people who could add value. Now you might be thinking to yourself, I'm divorced, my kids are gone. I know because mine are. I'm not the best father in the world. But when we're together over those summers, I try to be the very best dad I can. That's how you add value. And I challenge you, I challenge all of us, let's add value to the situation. See, when I got out, I wanted to become an entrepreneur, and I saw others, as I said, fellow veterans. And I met them at Entrepreneurship Boot Camp for Veterans and Bunker Labs. We collaborate with one another to work together to build a new future, to change the world again. IEDs will go off in life, and people will die. But I challenge you, in the difficult times, add value to that situation. Add value to every situation you encounter. You'll be amazed at what happens when you do. Thank you.